Yeah, and okay. okay, Professor Doug Bourne, it's uh, so great to be able to talk to you. Again. Thanks so much, Stefan, for having me here yeah. outside of our office. <laughs> Which is beautiful yeah. uh, to be outside of the office. Hey, listen, uh, I was trying to figure out where in the world are you from, Doug? Well, it's, uh, it's funny. I grew up in Chicago, uh -huh. uh, and, you know, I'm... I was pretty much that kid growing up that walked around with a, a pen in his hand and, and his nose in a book. I was, you know, just my family was just kind of promoting me to be a reader mm -hmm. from a very young age and a writer from a very young age. So, you know, I came to I came to what I do basically through detective stories and magic and kind of anything with a surprise I was really, really interested in. And that kind of led to etymologies of words mm. and study of ancient languages. And next thing you know, I'm studying the ancient languages to get at the ancient people. Mm. And that's kind of how I got into the history that I do. No, that's amazing. So where did you study and with whom? Uh, I, all of my graduate work is from uh, the Uni University of Texas at Austin. Uh -huh. uh, so even though I grew up in Chicago, I'm kind of a Yankee at heart. You can't take Texas out of me now, I'm I finding. I tell you what, don't and mess with Texas, I guess. <laughs> You don't mess yeah. with Texas. Yeah. But it, it, it gives me a unique, um, unique perspective on things. I also have 21 years of Catholic education, mm. and uh, I think that's given me an insight into you know, the histories of religion were always something we studied in school. Theories of religion were something we studied in school. And the problems associated with religion were things that we studied. And so when I got to do ancient, uh, my ancient material, mm -hmm. I kind of had a unique perspective on ancient religion and uh, religion in the past mm -hmm. uh, that other people didn't. I think you know today we think myths like Star Wars and Hercules are you know kind of the extent of what people believe believe and and for me it's important to put those beliefs back in in space and in time right, and in study them in, in local context. No, very good. Uh, I understand you to be one of the one of the more prolific people in the department. <laughs> so so I'm I'm wanting to ask you about. Uh, your most recent research. I understand you have uh, three or four books stacked up, but, <laughs> but tell us about your most recent research. Well, my most recent research comes out of a lot of my identity work. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm just really kind of amazed, I think, today, um, how much we still label people of the past with definite articles. We talk about the Romans, we talk mm -hmm. about the Christians, mm -hmm. we talk about the way the Christians were seen by the Romans, and I have a major kind of problem with uh, labeling people in this way. I think group, group dynamics and individual dynamics are much more complex. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do in my recent research, um, in particular talking about Christianity in the Roman Empire, is find the language to be able to describe uh, all of these individual experiences and, and the complexities and the, the um, kaleidoscope of, of ways in which people were able to, to be a part of the empire that they lived in. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the most recent book? Uh, so that, my most recent book yeah. is Coming Out Christian in the Roman World, and it's the study of how Jesus' followers found their place in Caesar's empire. Uh, outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding, outstanding. And so you're looking to complicate conceptions of, of, of groups of people, which is very useful. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And it, it really means getting down into the, the nitty gritty work of understanding Rome mm -hmm. from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And so my experience as an archaeologist, in addition to being trained in ancient languages as a historian, is really something I draw upon the, the most. Because, you know, in some ways, I'm sure you know this as an as a American historian, you know, the, the ways in which we talk about America demand kind of broad picture to put context around specific individual issues. It's the same thing with, with Christianity or Judaism in, in the Roman Empire. Um, for me, you know, I'm trained to study the, the whole picture mm -hmm. and to, to put these groups into, into specific settings. Mm -hmm. So um, my work is, you know, I get my hands dirty and I go behind the scenes and I read some of the ancient sources and, and I try to put it together. Wow. Well, tell me, what's, uh, what's the, the next research project that you're working on? So my next project expands upon some of this broad work that I'm doing by, by focusing really intently and narrowly on one specific aspect of Roman culture, which is the cult of emperor worship mm. in ancient Rome. Um, Rome's deified their, Romans deified their leaders. They turned them into gods. Mm. And this is traditionally seen as a source of conflict in antiquity between Romans and Christians. Um, one of my research is now kind of getting into is how uh, the process by which when Christians came into the palace, they kept deifying their gods. Uh, or deifying their, their rulers. So I'm interested in, in exploring why 
why some of them would continue this social practice and why others would try to rebel against it uh, and what happened as a result of that conversation. Wow. Professor Doug Bowen, we're very, very lucky to have you here in the St. Louis University Department of It's great to be here, Stefan. All right, thank you. Thank you.